and a lot of the issues that we have at the moment center around access um, to operating lists because um, the women, you know, understandably compete with other cancer sites um, for prioritization uh, in, 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 in treatment. Um, but the other issues that we have at the moment um, relate to preoperative diagnosis uh, and some inequity across the region that we see in uh, accessing this sort of gold standard uh, part of uh, the diagnostic pathway and work up towards treatment. And that centers on the willingness of home or referring trusts to undertake preoperative biopsies because we recognize that it is a large workload additionally within our department to ask the radiologists uh, to do that um, for all women coming to us for ovarian cancer treatment. Um, and it also has an impact on women insofar as um, if they do access preoperative diagnosis, um, they are asked to attend a number of appointments on a number of different days. And that can also result in a delay to a treatment decision uh, because they may need to be discussed multiple times on an MDT. You, you could really look at before women even hit us so it's kind of the the journey to the gp and back and forth they often have a couple of times um and they get into us quite quickly so if i think about the part of the pathway that i suppose we can directly influence rather than like softer influence um at the front end so to speak um There's a few things. I think that the, the care, the level of care that people get is phenomenal in terms of the quality of their consultations um, and the level of information that they're provided with. Things that I think would be could be improved would be environmental. The clinic environment that we have is not really fit for purpose. When you go elsewhere, it's actually quite embarrassing that you're a regional centre of excellence and the environment that you're provided with could be a lot better. Um, but I think when patients come, they probably don't really care what the colour of the walls are. They just want to be sorted out. If they could have ring fenced operating slots so that the, the patient is kind of given a provisional date at that clinic visit and then obviously the outcome of ongoing MDTs might change that but they're often still left with a bit of uncertainty and well we'll contact you with a date within the next week and that's not ideal obviously with the newer pathway Chris is trying to streamline appointments so that they're not backwards and forwards for appointments because I think that that is hard for them when they don't feel great. Prehabilitation, which is quite the buzz at the moment in oncology, which is around like exercise programs, breathing programs, nutrition, um, additional resources in that to either have stuff online on the QE website that people can join in and I was laughed at actually when I brought this up at some time ago like having DVDs that we can give people and everybody was well who has a DVD player now but a lot of older people would um, and wouldn't necessarily want to access something online so I do think that you have to have information in a couple of different formats for people? So this is how it is now, the normal pathway. I think when ladies are first referred to us, I think some ladies' nutritional support is not very good. I think this could be addressed at the unit hospitals or even at a GP practice when patients are first seen. It's a very important aspect for our patients, but this is a one I've seen quite time and time again. Um, people's lack of understanding of nutritional support, especially when we're trying to optimise patients for a treatment. Um, it's one of the last things I feel that you know people understand. Sometimes some patients have 
a learning disability um, or have a learning difficulty or have mental health problems or maybe just vulnerable. Again, I think when they're referred to us, we're not always aware of that from our unit hospitals or from our GP practice. I think that could be done better. Um, I think we're very good at identifying these issues when they come to the QE um, because we're able to say, oh, well, somebody needs a nutritional pack or somebody needs uh, some support from the learning disabilities team when they come to the QE. It's amazing how fast things progress and the support patients get. Again, we don't always see the patients from a clinical nurse specialist point of view. It's not enough of us. <laughs> and you could have four or five streams running on a Tuesday morning and there's only, well, there's only currently two of us in the, the clinic. So not everybody will see a nurse specialist. Um, I think we're very good at the holistic side of things. So doing a holistic needs assessment, which I think is really important for patients. I'm very passionate, I would say, about gynae oncology. I would feel all the clinicians here are everybody. And I think it's a good teamwork that we've got in gynae oncology from the admin who will highlight a patient that may be needing that extra support to, to us via the MDT so we can identify as well. So good team that we've got here. It's a very long and tortuous route to getting to us in hospital. And quite often, um, women have seen a number of healthcare professionals before uh, they have had an investigation where they'll reach a diagnosis and be referred on to us. Um, so uh, I think, unfortunately, because it, women experience such non-specific symptoms, that first it's 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 that thought that something might be wrong in the person themselves and a lot of women um you know understandably think that there's it, it, there's nothing much going on and as time passes symptoms progress and become more worrying and start to limit that person's ability to do the day-to-day -day activities um but at the course of that they'll probably have seen the gp a number of times uh, and it might even present it to a &E with symptoms. And for all there are two weak weight pathways in place, that's only the beginning of the journey. And actually uh, getting to a point where they've had those investigations after they've seen the GP, we're already two or three weeks down the line, then they get the results. Then there's a referral to MDT. So already a number of weeks have passed before they get to the point where they can meet one of us uh, at the QE will go through our MDT and have a discussion about um, what treatment options are available to them. I think there are some good things in the pipeline. So uh, our team have been looking at uh, rapid access to a CT scan. So uh, if women have vague, non-specific symptoms that could be suggestive of a cancer, then a GP can be referred through that vague non-specific symptoms pathway and get a CT scan quite quickly. Um, and that was a lot, of, a lot of collaboration between uh, some of our consultants, radiology and GPs. But again, I think that's, that's a cohort of people within our region that doesn't necessarily reflect the experiences of people uh, right across the northeastern Cumbria, which, which we're taking care of at the moment. Over the last two or three weeks where we've we've started the pathway or started how we we might envisage the pathway to be, we're already compressing about three or four weeks of that pathway into one day. So uh, whilst we're doing we're making headway there, I think there's headway to be made beforehand uh, to speed up the treatment and the pathway for women with ovarian cancer. Once women are identified with an advanced ovarian cancer, I think we can see them quite quickly. Um, and the communication between different regions across uh, the northeastern Cumbria is improving. Uh, so we, we do find that if women are particularly unwell, and they're picked up in the, the local units, that communication with us is very good. And we can 
we can salvage the treatment options for some ladies who are really quite sick by admitting them to hospital and optimizing them so they're fit enough for treatment.